Louisiana Beer Reviews, we're doing Bayou Test Tart Tart Side. Okay, kids, so we're looking at Bayou Test Tart Side. Now, this is uh, another series on their Tart Side. Uh, I believe they put a strawberry out to complement it with this release, and before that, it was a cherry tart. I did try the cherry tart. I did like that one. This one is a little different. You've had it before. I've never had it. This, yeah, this is uh, this is a sour mash rye. Now, when I think sour mash rye, the first thing I think of is bourbon. In particular, I would think of not only bourbon, but the most famous rye that we have around here is Sasserac. I would think Sasserac. Oh, yeah. But the sour mash, to me, that's old crow, yeah. brings along the lines of, it's not completely done yet. That's the sour mash, is the mash before it's turned into. Well, wait, the sour yeah. mash means they, they took some mash from the previous batch and they're using it to prime the new batch. Okay. It's like, it's already active, so they're using it to get the new batch going. It's like a primer, like, like a, a booster. Sourdough. Yeah, like a booster, yeah. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and try this. Uh, initially when I had it, um, I had a, uh, a reaction that I didn't expect from it. So we're going to go ahead and try this. And, and I've never seen that. Yeah, I don't even know what the alcohol is on this or anything. Okay. It's nice got a little pop. smoke coming off of it. Nice pop. This is the last one in the four series that I have. Nice little thin white head, a very charged amber appearance. I mean, there's bubbles galore in there. They're just fierce. The bubbles are fit. Oh, pretty big head. And if it was at one of those Pilsner glasses, the head would be this thick. Yeah. Oh, and it's it must be bottle conditioned because it's it, it turned from clear to look. Well, you you get the swishing pour. Yeah. Look, look what happened. Yeah. It's two different beers. Oh boy. Let me see that bottle. Uh, if you, if you, if you, on the head. I just want to put this out for the. Wait, there's a robot killing a man. <laughs> yeah, that's 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 pretty standard. Killing two people. Yeah. Killing two people. So I just want to put it out there for everyone um, that follows these reviews that you and I do. Yeah. Reviews that you and I do are separate than the reviews that you do with other folks. Maybe your daughter, or you just recently did some with John in Georgia. Or maybe some you might have a special guest person. Um, I don't know if the reviewers noticed or not, but I am not a fan personally of a tart beer. I did try the cherry version to this at the brewery in Arkinville, and I loved it. It's fantastic. So I thought maybe I have changed. Maybe I do like tarts. The Tart Beer series to me reminds me too much of a Nawa later type tart candy or a sour apple type thing where I'm not really looking for something like that in a beer. Or those Warheads candies. Those like powdery Warheads. Okay, yes. Along those lines where I'm not really looking for something candy, sour, tarty in a beer. I'm looking for something that's more refreshing to go down. Wait, I, I did a lot of reviews with my daughter, John and Lily, many other people, but I never said I liked tart beers. I don't like them. Right. So, like I said, the, the cherry version that was put out, I did enjoy. And I don't know if it was just a cherry nest that's in it. I don't know if they used real cherries. They kind of imparted something else into it. But I'm sure this one's going to be different than a cherry. This is rye. You ever went to a so movie? <laughs> I already know what I'm going to say about it. You're not going to like it. Yeah. That's why you got to switch your poor Go ahead. You ever went to a movie theater in 1977 and at intermission, everybody would go out and smoke? Mm -hmm. And you'd see those women smoking Benson and Hedges? Mm -hmm. It smells like Benson and Hedges cigarettes. I swear. It does have like a cigarette smell to it. 
I don't know if that's something that's imparted off at a rhyme. The first aroma hit that hit me made me think of being at Lakeside Theater on Veterans and at intermission, you know, these people, they just can't wait to get outside of intermission and they light up and they're like, <sighs> and I, I just remember 1977, these women like 42 years old and they got their Benson and Hedges and they're like, oh. and I, just that smell, you know, that like cigarette smell. Mm -hmm. It's bizarre. Yeah, and it's got some other funk going on. <laughs> yeah, I, like, um, it's not describable. It's almost like a, a bag spinach. You know, the I've been told that these things are, are brewed with what's called a, a wild yeast, which I don't really know what wild yeast means either. Uh, no, but I was also told that the wild yeast versions were prominent back in the days when I was, was doing beer. But I don't know if we're just in a resurgence of, of beers that nobody really liked back then, so why would they like them now? It I'm smells sure. like... United Airlines on a plane, like you know how you get in a cabin and it's like real stale. It smells like wet, it's like vinyl cardboard. It just, I mean, <coughs> it smells funky. It's it's got this funkiness to it. And if anyone could chime in after this review and let us know about these sour slash tart slash weirdness that's going on, let us know if this is normal or not. You, even someone from LA 31, if you can just yeah, because I knew these people that had a 198. Hey. Yeah, I knew these people that had a 19. Yeah, you guys aren't, aren't really doing it right. Well, yeah, it's okay. Kind of, at this point, I kind of feel like I'm at Walmart and I'm at the self checkout, and yet the person in the yellow is expecting me to know how to use the register, but I'm like, I didn't take the course. So, with that said, yeah, it's like I I knew these people that had a 1980 Ford Pinto. You know the uh, the uh, remember that they had that Ford Pinto uh, station wagon that they call it Camback. It smelled like the vinyl seats in a Ford 1984 Pinto Camback. Funny, the second person today is talking about old Ford Pintos to me. Yeah, it literally smelled like that car. All right, it's it's very industrial. It's, it's, it's very industrial. Going on there's a tar. It. There's a tar note. It's almost like the more you smell it, and the more you get it on your on your inside of you, it's almost like the better it becomes. Yeah, I don't know how many beers people drink that smell like a 1977 Benson and Hedges cigarette and a 1980 Pinto Camback, but it's bizarre, but the, the flavor is not, not bad. It's tart, it's hot forwardy, forwardy, almost like if you get a really hoppy Sierra Nevada. Oh, back in the this day. is very much like um, some kind of really tart juice. Like I'm, I'm trying to pin it down. Um, like cranberry on the cranberry side. Cranberry without the sweet side. That's kind of like what this is like. There's a canned Ugh. juice. It comes in a long cylindrical can, and it reminds me of that. And it's. Uh, I'll get it. It's um, Lucky Leaf. Um, uh, it's a uh, lemon. The bubbles tea. are. It, it's kind of stingy as it goes down. If that makes any sense. There's a tea-like quality. It's like a tea, like a cold tea. Um, uh, the Lipton Cold Brew Lemon. Carlos. You're hurting Jay's brain. Yeah, I'm trying to, you know, I'm trying to make an approximation of it. Um, this has got to be one of the most bizarre beers I have ever tasted in my life. I'm glad I saved one to let it mellow and kind of age a little bit because it tastes a lot better than it did when it was virgin. Yeah, the virgin it was just like whoa, it was bitey and jumpy all over the place, and you you couldn't keep it down. But this is kind of mellowed out some. So the age is kind of almost kind of like I'm getting almost like the flavor profile aftertaste that I get off of sour mash bourbon. So yeah, if that's I, what they were going after, I'm I, can, I can get that. I'm definitely getting some Arnold Palmer iced tea with some <clears throat> black pepper notes, very minimal. 
<clears throat> um, this is one of the most bizarre beers I've ever tasted. It's a pretty crisp finish, yeah. yeah. Okay, well, if you're going to drink a beer that smells like 1977 movie theater intermission Vincent and Hedges cigarettes with, um... With a 1972 Ford Pinto. No, 80. 1980 Ford Pinto came back. I'm thinking 19. Okay. Came back uh, uh, vinyl seats and um, new. New, not used. Yeah, um, wood grain. It's really weird. It's, it's a fun beer to drink. I would give it a... Um, uh, A minus. Let's give it an A because I don't really like tarts, but this is coming in kind of different for me. Uh... It tastes a lot different. It's a lot more pleasant than what I remember it being. This is a little less pithy, meaning pithy. Yeah, yeah. It's almost kind of mellowed out. It's almost gotten sort of almost like a wood thing. So I'm not really. I'd like to actually talk to the brewer, see what they were looking to do with this. Maybe we can make a trip there and talk to Carlos. It does make me want to drink some Sazerac rye. But uh, makes, makes me want to just visit and see what's going on. You yeah, know? I, I I think a minus here, eight there, it'll round up to an A. So we're saying from like a the nine overall eight. overall I love what this company does. I like their. Oh uh, yeah, most viewers can't yeah. get it, but uh, oh, uh, yeah. what, what what they do out there is just just phenomenal. They're they're just a kind of like a they're kind of like a pull opposite from the Bruce Sog people, but this this is really really good. Yeah, um, I, I, I'm really Again, this is something that it tastes a lot better as it aged. And I don't know if it just needed mellowing, but uh, initially when I tried it, it just was not favorable on my palate. You so. gave two away. It kind of shocked me at first, but uh, it, it was like the initial rush of the shock, and then it mellowed into like, hey, you know, uh, I could drink this occasionally. Would yeah. Do it every day. You know? It's like the tartness and the, and the, if there's any sourness, well, it says sour mash. I'm not sure what's supposed mm -hmm. to be a tart or sour. And yeah, I don't, I don't understand that part of it, but um, yeah, it's uh, it's good. Yeah, I'd say it's good too. And I, and my impression with a lot of sour beers is not so favorable. But this, one, it, this one is okay. So good stuff. All right, so Carlos, then, keep up the good work. Two thumbs up here. Louisiana beer reviews. So lazy, lay bon, <laughs> lazy, lay bon ton relay. <coughs> Y'all come on down to Jefferson Parish, Louisiana. Wow, that really—it's unusually different. It developed. It did.